By the end of this video, we will have created this page, which is a gradient color, but we can change the gradient color using these inputs. So, a third color will be red, whatever. We can create any gradient color we want, and we're using these inputs, which will be part of the jscolors.js library. And we are going to also use d3.js just as our basic JavaScript library. And we are not going to use any, we're not going to do anything in the HTML except for our JavaScript or anything in the CSS. We're going to do everything within JavaScript using d3.js. Okay, so we're going to start in a blank document, and here's the code. We have nothing in the code. We have a link to a JS colors in a folder, a link to a D3 version 5 min, and a blank script tag. So let's take a look at this, just a quick look at this colors folder. So this, we don't really need to mess with any of this stuff but the code is right there in your files. So let's go down here and we're going to use d3.js to do the whole entire project. So let's declare a variable, set it equal to, so what we're going to do is select the body. So d3.select and in quotation marks we type body and then we are going to append a p p e n d a main. Okay, so now we are going to style the main element, and this is chaining. So this is all one line. We can do it like this. So we're going to give a position. The position goes inside quotation marks. Outside we do a comma and then again in quotation marks absolute so I'm going to chain these so I'm going to break this right here because we um, it's easier to so I'm going to copy this so we need four styles we need five styles actually pasted that's going to be for our top that's going to be for our left and that's going to be for our width and that's going to be for our height and that's going to be for our background so this is top, set that to zero. We don't need quotation marks for our top. Left, and zero. This is going to be width, 100%. Now this guy has to go in quotation marks, and the height, 100%. Now our background that's going to be a linear gradient so right now I'm going to hard code something comma comma Okay, so let's go see what it looks like, if it looks like, if it's going to work. So we have our gradient. Let's look at the inspect element. So we have a main with our position and all our styles there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a form. So what we're going to do is append that to the main element. So d3.select main.append form. Okay, so now let's give the form some styles. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. 
and a few more times. So I'm going to give it a, a same thing. I'm going to give a width and actually I'm going to copy all this right here. So the position is still going to be absolute, but the top will be. So let's set the form to 5%. Now we are going to need quotation marks around these because we're using the percent and the left also 5%. The position is not really that important, but we sure don't need, we just need about 20% width and a 50% height. Now, just to be able to see it, uh, I want to look at, see where it is. Style, border, and let's go with solid, one pixel, and red. And we need the semicolon at the end. So I'm probably going to take this board out after we see it. But there's the, there's the form. So instead of having this style, and I need the semicolon there, let's go ahead and get the form. Let's get d3.select form.append. So we're going to create some inputs. So this is going to have to be an input type text. So it's a dot attr type text. So now I want to give this text. First of all, let's look at this, see what we have now. So now we have an input right there. So now I want to give this input a class. To create a class in D3, we say class and in parentheses, we write the class. We're going to call this one color in parentheses. And outside, I mean, in quotation marks, we have to call it, we have to say true. Okay, so let's go take a look and see what we have now. So now we have a an input type color. So we have a color picker. And that's because of this library. Okay, but what we really want to do is create three color pickers with labels. So let's go down here and let's, first of all, let's declare a, a, a variable and call it labels and see it equal to an array. One, we're using quotation marks because we want this to be text. Two, Three. Okay, so now we are going to use a for loop. For i equals zero semicolon till i is less than labels dot length semicolon i plus plus. So now we, so let's go ahead and get the form, form, oh, let's see, d3 dot select form dot append label give it a style dot style I'm going to give them a color of orange and then I'm going to give them some text now the text I'm going to give them so what I want to do is pull this so I'm going to give them so I want to give the labels I'm going to call them color but I also want to give them color one 
color two, color three. So right here, inside of here, we're going to create a space, and then outside, I'm going to concatenate labels, brackets, I. So I'm going to go through each one of these, one, two, and three. Then I'm going to have to, again, concatenate a closing quotation marks. So I need to put the inputs inside of the for loop to be able to create enough of those. So I also want to also, so let's see if this is going to work, okay? So we have the labels, one, two, and three, but let's display everything as block. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this style. I'm gonna paste it right here. And that's going to be display. And that's going to be block. So now what do we have? And there we have, we have our color one, color two, color three. But what I want to do, let's give the inputs some margin and a little bit of bigger size. So the inputs right here, I think I already have the styles. So margin dot top. Let's go 20 pixels. And let's give it, let's give these both a font size Two em that might be too big, but let's find out. Oh, that's too big. I also, but I want to do. How about a one point two? And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy that and paste it up here for the labels. Okay, so let's try that out. And that's better except for I want to give them a margin bottom. And that looks a lot better. But the labels, in order to be able to see them better, I want to give them a, just for the labels, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and I'm gonna give them a font weight. And call them bold. Okay, so now let's use these color pickers to change the color of our gradient background. So the way we do that is we need to get the values in our inputs. But first of all, we need to give each one of those inputs an, a unique attribute. ID. So it's ATTR in print in quotation marks ID and then so the same way we did the colors what we need to do is we need to quotation marks and then outside we need to add and Labels, brackets, I, and then plus, we need to the closing, closing quotation marks. So now, let's see if this is going to work. Can't guarantee it's going to work, but we have to look at the expect element, and inside the main, inside the form, we have our inputs, and now we have an ID of one, ID of two, and an ID of three. So now, let's go in outside. Now we're outside of the for loop now. Let's get the value of ID number one. So we D3 dot select. So we are going to select all 
input and then on change this is the event on and then parentheses and quotation marks change I'm going to do a function anonymous function if you and I'm going to add my semicolon okay, so what we are going to do we're going to water we're going to just declare some, uh, some variables so this equal to d3 dot select hashtag one we want to get the value but the value is a property Value has to go in quotation marks. So let's go ahead and console.log one. So first I'm going to open this console. So when I change when we change any of these, we get the hexadecimal number. So let's go back to the code and before this, let's two tick marks, two quotation marks, and then a plus and a hashtag inside there. Now we can use these in our colors. So let's go back to the code and up here where we got the style, let's just copy all this. So we want to get d3.select main and paste. So we're going to get the style. First of all, we also have to copy this. We have to get two and three. Okay, so we have one. We need two. Now you're two and three. Three. Okay, so when we get select the main dot background, so what we're going to do right here, this is going to be one string right here in linear gradient, and then we're going to add concatenate one in our variable. Then we're going to concatenate with that. We need this comma, and we need a space inside of the quotation marks, but only one. And then we are going to add again, concatenate two, our variable. And then again, plus, and one for our closing. Okay, and then we need to, again, concatenate three, and then but we, uh, we will need another closing tick mark. But this is going to have to be, we need one on the outside. Okay, so what we have is background linear gradient, color one, color two, and color three. Now I think this is going to work. Let's back this up a little bit. So we have a style, all this background linear gradient. What we need is our closing parentheses because we have, this is the style. These parentheses are part of the linear gradient. And it's working. We are definitely changing our gradient. So we could do a lot more with this form. We could create a select element to choose whether we want a radial gradient or a linear gradient. And we could also create stops, but we can also create more and more colors. And we're going to do that in an upcoming video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.